You're listening to Linux News Log, separating the Linux and open source signal from the noise. Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC2 at QuickSurf Internet Studios. Linux News Log is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And with that, let's go ahead and get into the stories for this episode. Starting off over at IT World from Stephen J. Von Nichols, the first rule of choosing a desktop Linux distribution is user know thyself. He writes, on a regular basis, I use five different Linux distributions. Over the decades, I've used pretty much every major Linux distribution out there, and I haven't even touched more than 10% of all available Linux distributions. If I, who've made something of a career tracking Linux, can't keep up with all the distros, how can you? Honestly, you can't. No one can. So, then he writes, so how can you find the right Linux for you? Well, this handy dandy guide will help. So basically, uh, he gives a nice little rundown. Um, you know, you really need to know what you're trying to do when it comes to uh, using uh, a, you know, a Linux distribution. So definitely, uh, you need to identify what exactly it is you're attempting to do. Uh, but still, I thought this was a pretty interesting read, and I thought I would share it with you, all of you. From electronicsweekly.com, Ubuntu Edge misses a chance for a Linux alternative. Just a quick flag in the sand post to mark the fate of a possible Android alternative. The Ubuntu Edge, which is the next generation of personal computing, smartphone, and desktop PC in a state-of-the-art device, and I'm using quotes here, uh, missed its crowdfunding target. So unfortunately, uh, it reached a record total of pledges, $12.6 million, but that was far and away from its very high target of $32 million. Uh, under the terms of the crowdfunding project run on Indiegogo, all contributions will be returned. Um, it's real unfortunate. Uh, we'll have to see what comes of it anyway. Uh, over at IT World again, uh, Steve Ballmer is retiring from Microsoft. Uh, Jim Lynch writes that this is a dark day for Linux. Just a quick note about Steve Ballmer. As you may have heard, he's retiring from his job as CEO of Microsoft soon. He's uh, characteristic, characterizing this, uh, Jim Lynch is here, as a dark day for Linux because Ballmer has unwittingly been a true friend to Linux during his long reign of errors at Microsoft. Um, Bomber uh, has helped in growing the Linux user base over the years unwittingly simply because of Microsoft's missteps. Windows 8 in particular has gotten many Windows users to take another look at Linux. Um, it would be better for Linux if Bomber had stayed a few more years, but he's not. So uh, should be pretty interesting to see what happens at Microsoft. Um, I... You know, I'm curious to see what happens. Microsoft may make a 180, which in turn is a dark day for Linux. But, uh, you know, the way things have been going over there, you know, it's it hasn't. I haven't used Windows regularly in quite some time. From Pharonix, a System76 Gazelle Pro, an Ubuntu Haswell laptop with Ubuntu Linux. This is pretty neat. System76 recently sent over their Haswell-based Gazelle professional laptop. That supports uh, HD graphics, uh, 4600, a fancy Intel SSD, 8 gigs of RAM, and a beautiful HD display. It's already been used for testing within a few Pharonix articles, and uh, they're now writing a full look at the Ubuntu-based laptop with some comparison performance tests. So pretty interesting. They've got a nice little rundown. It's it's a you know looks like a at least externally, a physically a, a run-of-the-mill laptop. Uh, should be pretty interesting. It's a nice eight-page uh, article, so definitely check that out if you're looking for a uh, an Ubuntu-based laptop. Uh, from IT World, running Linux on a Windows PC, you're getting started guide. That's right. So Stephen J. Von Nichols wrote the uh, 
the handy little guide that we just talked about a few minutes ago about knowing thyself and what distribution might be best. Well, if you're running Windows and you want to try out Linux, this is a nice little guide for doing that. Uh, definitely check it out as well. You know, it's all about getting users to try new things. So it should be pretty interesting. From memeburn.com, Linux geeks rebuild the entire internet in a garage. This is right. Uh, this is pretty insane. A group of Silicon Valley based Linux hackers are crafting a new operating system, not for personal computers or smartphones or even tablets, but for the servers that underpin the entire internet. A group led by Alex Polvey is a pretty, is pretty ambitious too. It wants to change the way we build the entire internet. In fact, reports wired Polvey and his team want to make updating the worldwide network of computers as easy as it is with your laptop or smartphone. So this project is based on Chrome OS. It's a Google-owned operating system. Uh, like Chrome OS, it updates itself every few weeks. Unlike Chrome OS, it will be doing so not just for a single machine, but for servers around the globe. The idea is that companies behind every big web service out there will be able to update their operations much much more quickly. This has kind of been kind of the problem they're trying to solve because this has really been a huge problem, uh, particularly in server space. Um, you know, a lot of particularly larger companies, once they have a stable platform, they don't want to change it because every time you change something, that's when you introduce instability. And so more often than not, you'll find servers where the only way they can guarantee a company can guarantee security and still have a stable platform without having to go through the pain of patching and system downtime and all that other stuff is they get it up and stable and then they basically island it. And so there's no, you know, you can still get issues that way, but a lot of companies do that because it makes it easier to manage and they don't have to change it nearly as often. This is, I'm hoping this will fix this. That'd be pretty cool if it did. Uh, from lilliputing.com, KDE Connect brings together your Android phone and your Linux desktop. That's right. Let's say you've got an Android phone in your pocket and a Linux computer on your desk. Ever wonder why you have to pick up your phone to see notifications or use your PC keyboard to control media playback on your computer? Well, KDE Connect is a utility that brings your Android phone's notifications to your Linux desktop and lets you use your phone as a remote control for music and video players that bridges the divide between your phone and your PC and bridges the divide between your phone and your PC in other ways. I thought this was pretty cool. Definitely check this out if you have an Android phone and you run Linux. Should be pretty neat. That will do it for this edition of Linux News Log. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes. Please do follow us online over at quickshift.com. Please subscribe to the show if you haven't already done so. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. We'll see you then. Bye.